Edgar de la Guerre. Edgar de la Guerre. Amélie Wood de la Guerre. Elie Wood de la Guerre. Nedgar, Nedgar. Nedgar, Nedgar. Yeah, so it's kind of funny for me because I've been meaning to do a podcast on Harry and Meghan for over a year now. And I guess it was just serendipity that I didn't do it because I guess the story hadn't really progressed to where it needed to progress to. Even though I had plenty to talk about, you know, six months ago, 12 months ago. But, you know, I think it hadn't really progressed to where um, I needed to progress to. And I still think there's a long way for this story to go. And I still think there's a long way for this story to go. But... You know, I ain't worried about, you know, being trashed like the people who are like, being like why don't you make a comment? Because, like, trust me, I ain't like anybody give a fuck what I think anyway. I actually wanted to make a comment because of everything I've heard said about Maggie... Maggie. <laughs> of everything I've heard said about Harry and Meghan and the whole scenario, everything that relates to them, there's a few points that I don't think I've heard anybody point out yet. I'm sure someone's pointed them out, but they just haven't come across, um, you know, come across my timeline or whatever. Yeah, um, so I just want to make those points. So, the first thing I want to say about the whole Harry and Meghan thing taken together is, firstly, I'm going to try and limit this to like a 10-minute podcast. And, you know, that's difficult because I could speak on this for hours. There was so much to unpack here. So I'm really going to just skim over some issues. So it might seem like, the, you know, my thoughts aren't very well developed it ain't that I haven't got more to say on these issues. I just don't want to spend my life talking about these guys. To be honest with you, I don't spend hours of my life talking about these guys. Although some of the issues that I brought up are quite important. Um, so the first thing I'll say, and I've said this over and over again, and this feeds into very much a lot of the narrative of the people who are against them. And I'm getting more and more into, you know, well, yeah, I think I got very distracted and dragged into becoming part of the polarized culture and I'm now just getting myself back to just being a free thinker and saying what I think is right or wrong in regardless to in regardless to like previous political beliefs there's a word but it won't come to me right now you know it's like I'm not towing the left wing um, line I'm not towing the right wing line I'm just basically speaking on each individual issue as it occurs in my own view of you know what I think is the truth or the best scenario. Jesus, I labored that out because I can't find the fucking word that describes that. Anyway, so to cut a long story short, I start with this one point with Harry and Meghan. I think Meghan Markle was criminally naive in the way she joined the royal family. I think she was criminally naive in the situation she put herself in and regardless of the fact that she's American and probably doesn't know a lot about the British royal family, I kind of find it very difficult to have sympathy for her because she was so criminally naive in putting herself in the situation she's in. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean. Now, it's a bizarre scenario because I am not a fucking royalist, but I really, you know, pay attention to the news. And um, I used to read the papers when I was younger so I was very, very aware of some of the things that have gone in, gone on in the royal family. You know, some of the subtext, even though, to cut a long story short, I could give a fuck about them. Not, you know, love or hate them, it just mean nothing to me other than the, the monarchy which, you know, launched the colonial powers that, um, you know, subjugated and um, mistreated half the planet. But other than that, I don't give a fuck. But on the fucking reels... If you bother to study history, you can go back in the English royal family for hundreds of years and see stories of adultery, mistreatment, control, and all kinds of things that by modern terminologies, you know, would be unacceptable. And I get it. That's true of everything. But in the particularly in the British royal family, you can just go back a couple of decades and get a very clear understanding of something that someone else did say, which is that the royal family plays heroes and villains within the royal family, or at least the press play heroes and villains within the royal family. My point being, you look at the vilification of people like 
Princess Sarah Ferguson of Prince Edward, of Prince Edward's wife, whose name I don't even remember, Princess Diana. These people were destroyed by the British press. The British press didn't reserve their bile, hatred, and mistreatment for Meghan Markle. They fucking destroyed numerous members of the royal family in the past. Now, there was a time when the British press couldn't do that or there were limits to how far they could go. That is all tied up with Margaret Thatcher, Thatcherism, the breaking of the unions, and when she basically broke the print unions and allowed technology to take over printing, which allowed the reporters the power to write what they wanted. Because before then, the print unions would not print negative stories about the royal family, pretty much any of them. But once that whopping strike was broken and that she and Margaret Thatcher just like she did to the mind she broke the unions in whopping and they lost their power and their control of what was printed it became open season and I don't think she paid any attention or did any research to the levels at which they absolutely tried to destroy the lives of Fergie um Prince Edward his wife just numerous people, and obviously the Princess Diana story is much clearer, but they knew the people loved her, so they were kind of polite with the way they tried to destroy her life, but they were very, very clear about printing everything they could about her sexual liaisons, um, you know, front page news. So I think it's criminally um, negligent because this was not hidden information. I actually honestly think that Meghan Markle was legit on some coming to America shit. Like she thought like Harry was like the white prince of Zamunda and he came to, you know, he didn't go to Brooklyn, Queens. He went to Compton, um, LA or wherever her family's from and found himself, you know, his um, American queen and was going to whisk her back to England, you know, white Zamunda where she gets to live a fairy tale. Yo, motherfucker, it was never going to be... <laughs> It was never going to be that, you know, and regardless to how counterintuitive it is that we all know the royal family needed to modernize and having, you know, a black member post Princess Charlotte um, of the royal family is super important, especially for the modern times and, and basically would have been an injection of adrenaline into the potential of the royal family continuing into maybe the next century. You know, th this feeds into my second question. Their attitude is completely different to what we would expect. It's not counterintuitive. It's like, I'll jump to the second one. When people are talking about, you know, she made the aspersion that someone had questioned the potential colour of their first child, Archie. And people are saying, are a royal family racist? I mean, firstly, it's like, yo. That is probably the dumbest question in the world because it feeds back into the the concept of a racist only being somebody with a pair of Dr. Martins and a swatch sticker tattooed on his head who goes out at night or, um, you know, um, has, has a Ku Klux Klan outfit on and goes out at night and attacks people. You know, the actual actions of the family in terms of their monarchy and what they oversaw the actual fact that half of the most precious jewels and wonders of the world from all around the planet are still in their possession should tell you all you need to understand about these people and their concept of race. They ruled these nations. I'm not saying they hated them, but they ruled large parts of Africa. You are my subjects. Ruled large parts of India. You are my subjects. And they definitely, at least Britain as a country, didn't rule their colonies with the same level of respect and humanity that they ruled the subjects in their own country, the UK. No European nation did. So when you're asking, are, is this institution racist? We're right back to, are you having a fucking laugh? Shall I repeat? They ruled all of their kingdom, but the rule they applied to their colonies was completely different to the rule of their subjects in their own country. This is true for Prince Felipe of Belgium and, you know, just everybody, every, every European monarch, right? They very simply saw their, um, 
the the overseas colonists their black subjects as less than so you can call that anything other than racism if you want to but that was always the fact that's why they allowed things like um winston churchill to oversee starvation and brutality and concentration camps in india and africa in kenya if you were a monarch and you were anti-racist <laughs> you wouldn't fucking let that happen would you so obviously you was good as long as they was digging up the minerals and the gold and you got the star of India and you got this, that, the other and, and the money's flowing and, and you get to rule over a rich and prosperous kingdom. So that's just a dumb question anyway, as a starting point. And what I think, you know, was is interesting. I'm going to be kind of all over the place because like I said, really, it, there's so much to unpack here. You know, is that in asking that question, it's just it's it's just pathetic. The reality of royalty is that it's not are they racist. It's just reminding yourself of the simple, blatant fact. These are not secrets. I don't expect to get assassinated for saying this shit. Because this shit is fucking common knowledge. They are, as we would term them, blue-blooded. Basically, they are controlled and dictated by bloodlines. This is why people like Diana or Kate, so-called commoners marrying into the families, were big deals. Because if you weren't from royal lineage, lineage, you weren't meant to be in any royal family. They used to marry between themselves all throughout Europe. I failed history and I know that shit. So fuck are they racist to black people? They think they're above all people. Shall I say that again? I don't think this is some clandestine conspiracy shit I'm revealing to you here. Royal families used to marry each other because as far as they're concerned, only other royal bloodlines are actually of any value. So putting it very simply, they are not racist to black people or even if they do feel racist towards black people, it's irrelevant because they look, they consider themselves above all people. All non-royal people by blood are lesser human beings as defined by royalty. Read a history book. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Read a history book. So at the end of the day, man, it's like, uh, is the royal family racist? Well, yeah, I think definitely they um they presided over a hell of a lot of racism when they had an imperial um, you know, when, when they had a colonization and imperialism. But aside from that, they, they think they're above all of you fuckers. Anyway, all you subjects who will fucking give your life for them, you're expected to because they're above you. They're better human beings than you, more important human beings than you. So, you know, let's just start with that. <laughs> that they're above everybody. And then maybe they have grades, like, you know, a kind of South African apartheid system as to who is more important. And I'm sure they do, because that's how they allow people into the royal family. But let's let, make no mistake, every, every one of these commoners who marry into the royal family are made to be abundantly clear that they are less than. Look it up. Look it up. Diana, Fergie, I don't even know the name of the man's them, whatever. Mark Phillips, it's just like all of y'all, all of y'all. Be glad to be here, so shut the fuck up and do what we tell you. And that's how it is. And like I said, once the press were released from um the bind of the of, of the print unions where they were no longer where they were not allowed to print negative things about the royal family, then it became a pantomime of heroes and villains. And once they were allowed to have a villain, which I think is the relationship Megan was talking about, once she was explaining that. You know, effectively, the press would say, yo, we need a villain. We need someone we can tear the shit out of. And they were told who they could and who they couldn't. So what you would find is if you get bothered to Google Prince Andrew and and Koo Stark, front page news, villain, she's a whore, she's a, um, a naked model. She's the, uh, just she's a, a terrible piece of shit. Fergie and Andrew, Fergie sucking American um, millionaires, tolls, she's a tart, she's a whore, she's a this, she's a that, she's greedy, she's um thieving, she's everything negative you can think of, she's a redhead. <laughs> I mean, Diana, well, we've got to be careful with her because the people love her, but let's make sure that everyone's aware that she's having a lot of affairs. 
um, particularly with Indians and, and Arabs, you know, um, but, but there's people they can't speak about and nobody speak about Charles and Camilla shit. And all that's controlled and briefed. So, you know, I know I'm born in England and I accept totally, especially because I do pay attention to the news that even though I didn't give a fuck about royalty, I was aware of these things. But, you know, somebody should have told her and, and they, they actually say, before you marry into a family, you should look up that family. And to be honest with you, for most of us with love marriages, that isn't that easy. Like, you know, you might meet a girl from North and you're from South. Or you might meet a girl from Brum and you're from London. And it ain't easy to get information on them family. But this information was in the public domain. <laughs> the abject character assassinations, the relentless character assassinations of so many members of the lesser roles were in the public domain. So I, I, I put the blame squarely on her shoulders for thinking that she was living into some living in some version, some some white English version of coming to America. Coming to England. Hey, I'm Harry. I've come to Los Angeles to find myself a wife. <laughs> I don't know who's playing our senior hall, but you know, it, I, I don't know. I just think it was fucking criminally naive, criminally negligent, criminally naive to put herself in that position without understanding who and what royalty are and also understanding what happens to lesser royals and what is allowed to happen to lesser royals. You know, so I, I, I think that's the real deal. Now, again, Charles was always met next in lines of France, so they had to go easy. And they gave him a little bit of heat, but they didn't give him so much heat. But, you know, just, just, just putting things in perspective, right? as I've having this thought today, everyone vilifies Charles because, you know, he had an affair um, you know, while he was married to Diana and Diana was the nation's princess and la, 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 la. So we hate Charles for that, all that shit. Although, no, that, everyone's got over that. A lot of people still hate Camilla. But again, just in understanding the royal family, I say, let's flip that on the head. Let's suppose that Charles was not restricted and told that he couldn't marry the woman he wanted to, right? Let's say that the royal family had said to him, oh, you love this woman, Camilla. Well, tell you what, tell her to divorce her husband. And when she divorced her husband, you'll be allowed to marry her and you two can go on. You can have a love marriage to the woman that you obviously are besotted by. And, you know, when time is ready, you'll still, you'll still be able to be king. If he was allowed to do that, given the freedom to do that, which is obviously what he wanted to do, because that's the woman he's with now, right? I know I was talking about this to my missus. She's saying to me, yeah, but he had enough affairs, but this is the whole point. Yeah, yeah, men have affairs and particularly royalty, you know, kings have affairs, rich men have affairs. I'm guessing that she was on board with that because she understands the institution. She was always part of the institution, hence why she made a better partner for him and always would have been a better part for him than Diana. So she was cool with his affairs, his little dalliances with black women or pop stars or whatever he was doing, whatever it seemed that like he was doing. And she was happy to be, you know, his wife and, 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 and um, they, should, they should allowed her. And then you know what would have happened? No marriage to Diana. No marriage to Diana means, okay, now Harry and William, I understand that we can't play with the timelines like that. But the point I'm making is no, no, no need to not marry the woman you love or being allowed to marry the woman you love who's happy with the lifestyle you're going to live and your infidelities and being that, you know, that wife, that mistress accepting wife or whatever's going on with them would allow him to not have to marry somebody who he didn't love and create this fucking soap opera that most of us lived through. So the institution itself creates these problems. Um, another example was Prince Andrew. You know, he seemed to get on very well and seems to get on very well with, um, you know, Sarah Ferguson. But the point being, you now at some time, he was besotted with this um, model called Ku Stark. And it was like completely out of question. So the point is this control over who people can and can't marry creates the problems that come afterwards. You know what I mean? So there's no surprise going on here. Absolutely none. The question of racism is laughable. It just is. Just like, <laughs> I just don't know how to explain it, man. It's like, if I colonize the whole fucking country of people, and held them in some form of servitude. Even if racism isn't the word you would use. 
<laughs> even if racism isn't in the word you would use, let's just put it down as saying, you evidently don't consider me your equal. Because if you considered me your equal, you wouldn't conquer me and take over my country, set the rules and tell me what I can and can't fucking do. So you clearly don't see me as your equal. So the question of racism is kind of a just fucking ludicrous. Which is part of the ludicrous fucking world we live in now, where people think those are sensible questions to ask. But more to do with the family and understanding how the family works. And it's so interesting, you know, they were talking about echoes of um, Diana. For some reason, some TV channel played that interview um, Princess Diana did, made with, um, I think it was Martin Bashir. And she's talking in that interview about um, the fact that, you know, Charles doesn't want to be king because he'd find it restrictive. And it, that kind of made sense to me as to why, you know, although there was a period, a period again in the 80s and 90s where every week the newspapers were calling for the Queen to step down and let Charles become king. And they were going, oh, yeah, she'll do it when the Queen Mother dies. And the Queen Mother died and she was like, no, hell no, he ain't getting it. And it's because I don't think he wanted it. So again, then you see Harry talking about, you know, the restrictions of the institution and the fact that everyone's trapped within it. And you get to realise, well, yeah, they are. Because, you know, if they weren't trapped in it, Charles would have done, said to everybody, yeah, man, this is Camilla, man. This, this is my girl. I'm gonna, she's going to divorce. I'm going to marry her. We're going to be good because we get on. We see things the same way and everything's nice. And, and that's what normal people would have do. Andrew would have been like, yeah, I'm marrying my model. Whether it worked out, whether we broke up with her, that would have been done. I never would have been able to get on with their life. But the institution says no to all of that shit. And then it's just fucking disasters that come after that. Disasters of bringing Sarah Ferguson into your life and, and, and dying into your life. And let's not even get into what Andrew got into. Um, <laughs> we don't even need to go there. That has to be another podcast. So, you know, I, I think the whole things are kind of a, a nonsense. Like I said, there's so much to unpack, but I wanted to really just make that point about the institution of royalty and the fact that this whole conversation is completely skewed because you're talking about, um, you know, royalty like it's your brethren down the road and it isn't. So the questions you're asking are the wrong questions and your expectations of it are the wrong expectations. You know, um, a lot of those guys did what they had to do on the down low. I think particularly Charles and Margaret understood royalty in the way, like I said, like I always think of like Henry VIII, you know, or, or um, that great Mel Brooks. It's good to be the king. And just understanding what you can and can't do. And if the press leave you alone, get away with it. And if you're wondering what that's about, well, there's a great movie called The Inside Job with Jason Strafen and um, Saffron Burroughs, which hints to probably what my Princess Margaret was getting on, getting on with. And as I said, you just need, just, just need to pay a bit of attention to some of Charles's, you know, interests in the 80s. Um, what, what those two things tell me is they're not racist people in terms of we don't want to be around black people. That's not what it is. You know, that, that, that's not what it is. It's, it's, um, <laughs> you have to kind of, <laughs> I ain't even going there, man. Just, you have to work that shit out for yourself. You know, I'm trying to say, but I think a lot of these people, like, you know, like Madonna, people want to experiment with things. They want to try stuff out, doing a bit of a power, position of power and prominence, and they just enjoy themselves, especially if you're a lesser royal. And you know that, you know, you ain't never going to reach the phone, but you've got all this power and position and privilege. Why the fuck wouldn't you enjoy your life? And I think that's really what, you know, they was doing. And that's kind of what I expect from royalty is probably what I would do. So my point is, there's only one part of this whole interview that I find interesting in the, in, in the remote. And it really is the fact of the way it points to the cultural divide in the UK at the moment. That's the only thing I found interesting about the interview. There was a survey that basically said something along the lines of most of the young people let's say under the age of 30 side with Harry and Meghan and most of the people over the age of 30 over the age of 40 side with the royal family I think that what Harry and Meghan have done is disastrous or disrespectful or whatever and what that tells me is it's a direct Black Lives Matter issue so questions of are the royal family racist did somebody really ask about, um, you know, did somebody really ask about what colour would Archie be? <coughs> um, you know, <laughs> it's kind of really irrelevant because it's a Black Lives Matter issue. What we're really talking about are people who want to maintain a society 
in which white privilege and power exists and is never questioned and is never ever meant to be changed or challenged and people who don't think that kind of society is just or fair and don't think that there should be a patriarchal white society that everybody has to live in no matter what your um, gender race background or ability level everyone has to live in the same society which is you know structured in a way that it benefits some people more than others that's the real question here because like all of these questions over and over again what we're seeing is the same people are voting for brexit are the same people who are saying i refuse to say black lives matter all lives matter are the same people now saying harry and megan have spunked it how dare they do that they're a disgrace and the same people are saying, I prefer to be part of a multicultural integrated Europe, are the same people who are saying, no, I understand the term Black Lives Matter because all lives matter, obviously, but there is definitely a disproportionate amount of sufferation and, you know, um, violence and, and death and poverty amongst black people. And we should address that to create some kind of equality. And are the same people who are saying, well, isn't it shocking that the royal family had this great opportunity to show the world that it was a multicultural progressive institution and it spunked it? That to me is what's really, really interesting about this. That, you know, it's, it's the same divide. It's the same divide. It's the same war, partisan. That's the word I was looking for when I was saying that, you know, and we're not going to get dragged down any more rabbit holes and get pulled into partisan lines. I'm going to just speak the truth as I see it on issue by issue so I don't become what I hate, what I know isn't constructive or useful, um, you know, which is a zealot for anything. So, you know, the, the, the lines seem to be drawn. And right now, not exclusively, but very, very strongly, a lot of the demographics seem to be drawn um, um, along the lines of age, that the more middle class to elderly Europeans or white English people hold the same views on Brexit, Black Lives Matters, and um, the royal family and and and, and makes it. And the younger generation, um, you know, and a lot of the multicultural people, um, black people of ethnicities hold the same views, um, as in as in Remainers and pro Black Lives Matters and pro Harry and, and Meghan. So, you know, to me, that's that's really what's interesting. When you look at the debates and the arguments, because I can't get into the arguments because I just think they're trite. Like I said, if people are asking, is the royal family racist? People are asking, William, is your family racist? It's like, it's the wrong question, man. Read a, read a fucking history book. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm not even saying that their history makes them racist. I'm just trying to say that they're in a unique position that that's a stupid fucking question. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they're racist, like I said. Watch the inside job. Check out what Charles was doing in the 80s and Princess Margaret. And that. I don't think there's that kind of I hate black people racism, but I do think as a family that, you know, as I said before, repeating myself, as a family that presided over colonialism and uh, as a colonial power, there is definitely a view that, you know, their colonial subjects were not equals. But that's cool for them because I reiterate again, neither are their fucking English subjects equals. <laughs> it's exhausting. And I've, I, I've been here way too long. Yeah, listen, man, there's there's a million things to unpack and I could go for the interview, make a lot of points. But I think, frankly, the Harry and Meghan interview is technically a Black Lives Matter issue and not from the perspective of did some idiot in the um, royal family make a, a, a comment that might have been considered, you know, to be um, a microaggression along racial lines. It's just that, that, that side of it is irrelevant. The real issue is white European power structures, white supremacy power structures and how we are treated within it. Last thing I want to say, that I need one last thing before I forget. And in terms of that, in terms of understanding that what's occurring here is a Black Lives Matter, you know, I, there's a great um, Facebook post I saw a couple of years ago, years ago, like two, three years ago, it said something like, calm down, Prince Harry, you've only been black for a week. 
And I love that because this is what happens, right? What happens to black people? That shit's over there. I'm sure that's wrong and some of it is, but it's nothing to do with me. I even deny it happens at all. If I know it's happening, at least thank God it's not happening to me. It's nothing to do with me. But then you might make, you know, the mistake of maybe falling in love with a black person or going to business with a black person or, you know, befriending, being in a relationship with a, with, with a black person or, you know, does black or any other minority, any other discriminated minority where you now are in a position where you care about them and it stops being over there and becomes right in here. So when people are posting pictures of monkeys and saying this is what um, Megan's child's going to look like, they're also talking about Harry's child. And I respect him to the max because as a man and as a father, I would not respect you if you didn't stand up and defend your family. And that's why I think they bounce. And the people who don't understand that are because they, 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 they have no morality. They've got no backbone. They've got no, yeah, they've just, they just got no morality or backbone because, you know, that's what a man and a father would do. But what blows my mind the most, before I forget, is that the gaslighting is real. You know, it's amazing, the gaslighting. Gaslighting being, you know, a, a term to what people talk about what sociopaths do and narcissists do when they do something and then blatantly tell you they didn't do it. You know, look you, look you in your eye and do something and then try and convince you that they didn't do it. And when the British press and all the people on the institution side, on the side in support of white supremacy, they're telling people that, she wasn't mistreated or treated badly, even when somebody went into the fact check and, you know, produced a whole list of 20 or 30 things that she did, which were identical to um, Princess Kate, where Princess Kate was praised and she was criticised and they still refused to see that there was any kind of discrimination or, or, or mistreatment of her. Then you know that you're being gaslit. You're dealing with, and the funny thing about these fucking people is these are the kind of people that go, oh, Trump supporters are so stupid. <laughs> he gets fact checked all the time, and he's lying, and, and they can't see it. And yet, when they get fact checked in the thing that they want to believe, no, nah, that's not true, that's not true, she's just pushy, she's just this, she's just that. So the gaslighting is real. This, I think, is one of the biggest examples of mass gaslighting. Like, anybody look me in my eye and tell me that she was treated the same as anyone else in the royal family? I'm like, you are bugging or you can't read. Do you mean you're bugging or you can't read? Because if it was done to anybody else, or if it was the other way around, you would be like, I can't believe it. You know, white, white supremacist supporters love to tell you that they're in Jordan Peterson, right? There's no benefit in being um, a middle-aged white male or, 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 or anybody who is promoted and assisted by white supremacy. There's no benefit in that. Nowadays, all the benefits gone to all the minorities because the whole world is so woke. So if it had been turned on its head, if the world that they fantasize that we believe in, now that a few people are getting a little bit of um, equality, um, if the world that they fantasize that we believe in was true and it was the other way around, and every time Megan touched her baby bump, she was praised. And when Kate touched her baby bump, she was vilified. They'd be going, oh, see what I mean? See how the world's got so woke? That woman, she can do anything she wants because, you know, she's um, she's a black woman and, and, and the world's so woke that anything she does is okay. But when the, when, 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 I, when a, um, a British woman does exactly the same thing in the same family, she's vilified. So if, the, if it was turned on its head, they would see the mistreatment. But because the mistreatment supports their worldview, they don't. Because as far as they're concerned, I've said this a billion times, I'm getting bored of it. They think the status quo is fine. They're happy with the status quo. And that's why there's always going to be problems until either they die out and a new generation comes and them dinosaurs just die. And hopefully enough of the new generation, a bit like, I look at it a bit like the COVID thing, like, you know, yeah, once you get 70% of the people to understand or believe that equality is probably a good thing, the, like, the other 30% ain't going to matter so much. So I'm just hoping that they're dying naturally and then no one has to get into like any kind of arms house. But the reality is they're just happy with the way it is and they are going to convince themselves that the way it is is right, even if they know it's wrong, which is why the gaslighting is so real because they can't get put in a position where they have to answer those questions about people being mistreated and people being discriminated. They have to pretend it's not real 
Because the problem that they're giving themselves is they put themselves in the moral high ground and they want to point the finger over at Putin in Russia and what's going on in Myanmar. They want to point the finger and all these dictators and all these people and talk about the mistreatment of people all over the world and how superior they are. And then they get presented with their own prejudice, mistreatment and discrimination. And the only way that they can maintain that position of superiority is to pretend it's not happening. And that's why the gaslighting is real. That was in 10 minutes. But that's why I didn't want to do this. Because there's hours of hours of shit in this. But that's all you're getting from me. Because like I said, other than the fact that it just feeds into something that's going on in society right now, which is a challenge, not by black people, but by right-minded people from all denominations of the world against white supremacy. Other than that, and the fact that Meghan Markle was fucking criminally negligent, <laughs> frankly, bro. <laughs> I don't dislike her. I like Harry and I like Mega, but I could give a fuck. And I'm out. It gaff till a gaff. It gaff till a gaff. I'm in the with the till a gaff. In the with the till a gaff. Nick gaff, Nick gaff. Nick gaff, Nick gaff.